What's going on everybody? So now that the football season is here, I can officially say that we will now have Browns After Dark Sunday night, Monday night, and if that is not enough for you, we got another one on Thursday. So if you've ever said to yourself, hey, I wonder where I can meet with people and talk about the Browns, that is the place for you. Check us out at Browns After Dark on Twitter. The link will be in the description down below. Times will also be posted on that Twitter page, so be sure to give us a follow, turn on your notifications, and come let us know what you think. We want to know your thoughts, so I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Also, just want to let you guys know that this channel is partnered with the Offside Sports Network, and if you go to the Offside's website, you'll find yourself some new DF Sports merch out today. Got a couple hoodies and t-shirts up there, so uh, link will be in the description on that, but I would appreciate it if you guys would go check it out. Appreciate all the support. Follow Offside Sports Network on Twitter. Twitter, go check out the website if you're looking for my uh my stuff go to shop collection scroll down you will find it appreciate all the support all right what's going on everybody so today is tuesday night and i'm gonna go ahead and do this video now because my schedule is not gonna really allow me to do it any other time along with the other stuff that i have to do it's just the new work schedule this is my life now so here we are i'm gonna be honest with you um this is going to be a prediction for Thursday's game, and I don't really want to talk about this team right now. And if you know me, anything can pretty much turn into a rant. Um, that's how I feel right now. I am pissed. I'm very pissed. And it's frustrating because I really don't want to talk about this team. I really don't want to have to deal with this right now. But I'm going to say this right off the bat. Before I actually get into game predictions and talk about, like, what should happen versus, like, what probably will happen, um, I want to talk about something because there was a little bit of news that just happened, and I've been talking in spaces about it, and that is the news that the Cleveland Browns held a player-only meeting today. Players-only meeting today. And I want to talk about this for a second because this is something that absolutely had to happen. Because you are two games in, and the way you blew that game, it's caused such a ripple effect throughout the fan base, the organization, the locker room, which is confirmed, by the way, uh, probably the coaching staff, like, throughout the entire Cleveland Browns, you know what I mean, the actual organization, fans, everything, the city, I literally saw it, like, <laughs> it's... And it, it, it just makes me so frustrated. And this had to happen today because there needs to be something that's realized. And this is something I said in a space, and I want to repeat it here. Do you guys know that one kid that you went to school with, you know, and some of us are that kid, who just had things tougher? You know, they didn't go home to an easy house. They didn't have money. They didn't have the things that everybody had. And, you know, as bad as that is for them, nine times out of ten, those kids are the ones that work the hardest. Because they have to. They've been trained and taught that they have to their entire lives. Right? Me saying that, I'm sure y'all can think of somebody. And I would say I am that kid, to be honest with you. There is a certain mentality that you have to have to be successful. And my problem with the Cleveland Browns is that, in my opinion, we are that kid of the NFL. If you look at all 32 teams as a class, the Cleveland Browns are that kid. You know, the kid who didn't look the best. You know, didn't have the best stuff. Right? We're that kid. But we're acting like the rich kid who just should get handed everything. And, oh, we don't want you to boo. And just all that stuff. And we want to blame everybody else but our damn selves. And I just want to say this right off the bat. It is time for this defense. Because, again, anybody blaming Nick Chubb, you just stop. Like, just stop. The offense was fine. Jacoby Brissett is a backup quarterback in the NFL, and he did a pretty damn good job Sunday. The entire team, Amari Cooper, like, the offense was not the problem. But it is time for this defense to look themselves in the mirror. 
because there needs to be accountability held somewhere. Because we could sit here and we could talk about whether if it's Joe Woods, whether if it's the players, I don't really give a shit. I really don't. It does not matter to me at all who it is. But the problem needs to be fixed. This game Thursday, to me, is exactly like the 2020 season, which by the way was a pretty good year, wasn't it? When you got beat week one against the Ravens and everything looked terrible and everybody was all upset because here we go again. And guess what? Short week Thursday, you turn it around and you got it fixed. If the Browns don't come out Thursday pissed off with their hair on fire, this season is going to go downhill very, very quickly. And in my opinion, I think this loss should really be a reality check because you you can't care like there's no reason why the Cleveland Browns defense which as talented as it is is struggling against a New York Jets team with their starting left tackle their starting right tackle out and Joe Flacco as the quarterback there's no excuse so We can sit here and talk about who's to blame, and I've kind of shared my thoughts on that. But you know what needs to happen Thursday? Be pissed off. Don't be denied. Don't let people who, oh, you know, exactly like I'm talking about, like, oh, the rich kid, oh, you'll never have this. Oh, really? Watch how hard I work. That is what it needs to be. You have to go out and take it. You are the Cleveland Browns, and that is not... Uh, hey, you're not good enough type thing because this team is talented. Like, there are so many rosters way worse than the Cleveland Browns. But at the end of the day, it comes down to your mentality. You know, I was there. I watched the 10 times the Jets were offsides. I watched the missed calls. Like, you're not going to get that. So what do you do to overcome that? You take it your damn self. You have to. It is not optional. And if you want to talk about Joe Woods, and and again, I think it's Joe Woods' problem. Guess what? John Johnson, Denzel Ward, sit your players down who are under you. You are the leaders. And tell them, hey, listen to me. I don't care what he says. Hey, we got to fix this, right? Because here's the thing. If it is Joe Woods' fault... Get your ass down to his office and ask him what you're supposed to do. Because if he's a defensive coordinator, he will have an answer for you. I don't expect him to because I think he's incompetent. But if that is the case, you know what I mean? And and you say, hey, listen, this, what's going on here? You know, what am I supposed to be doing here? Because again, this is an entire unit problem. This is not just one or two guys. If Joe Woods tells you something and it still doesn't make sense to you, take matters into your own hands. I really couldn't care less. Because if they don't want to fire him, you know what I mean? It's like, hey, I'm going to do the best in my job that I can. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what needs to happen. Figure it out. You are way too talented to to get torched by Garrett Wilson. I love Garrett Wilson. But Greg Newsom and Denzel Ward should not be getting toasted. Grant Delpit should not be stumbling and bumbling around in the secondary, not knowing what he's supposed to be doing. Like, JOK, like everybody, figure it out. It really is not that hard. And it again, I'm going to say it one more time. It does not matter whose fault it is. Joe Woods or the players. It does not matter. I couldn't care less. Because you have to have accountability. You have to do your job. And if the players don't know what their job is, make up your own job. Make it up. You're your Pro Bowl players. Denzel Ward is an elite corner. If you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, d- do it yourself. Like you're the leader of that room. And I know this is going to sound crazy to a lot of people. But, like, if your coach is incompetent, if you're, and again, not Kevin Stefanski, I'm talking about Joe Woods. If he's incompetent and doesn't know what he's doing, would you rather suffer? You know what I'm saying? Would you rather suffer for the fact that you don't have a defensive coordinator, or would you rather try to figure it out yourself? 
because if it's me, I'm trying to figure it out myself. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play. Pl- uh, play press. If I'm a great at that, I'm not gonna be playing 15 yards back like Joe Woods. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just really sick and tired of this mentality. Uh, I'm sick and tired of the blaming and pointing fingers. Know who you are. You are the team in the in the NFL with 32 teams. You are the team that is not going to get handed anything. You have to go take it. And people are going to laugh at you and criticize you and say you have no chance. And either you allow it to affect you and you allow it to become true or you say, no, screw you. And I wish I could just, you know, but it's YouTube. Uh, d- go take it. Don't like you have to go take it. You cannot allow other people to hold you back. Like, there's no reason why Miles Garrett shouldn't have had at least 10 holding calls against him Sunday. You know what I'm saying? And, like, there's just, you got to find ways to overcome. And instead of finding ways to overcome, it seems like we're just pointing at the next guy saying, you didn't do, you didn't do your job, you didn't work hard enough. Like, figure it out. So this players meeting... Needed to happen. You know, you don't have Baker Mayfield to blame anymore. Point the finger at yourself. Figure it out. Be accountable. That's what it comes down to. Um, Getting into the game Thursday. Just on paper. And I've been talking to, and I've said this plenty of times, um... I got plenty of friends who are Steelers fan, but one that actually his opinion matters to me. Um, and I texted him and I basically said, Hey, uh, what's going on with the Steelers like health wise? Cause I, I haven't been able to pay attention. And he said that TJ, obviously TJ's out, but Devin Bush was on their injury report limited. He'll be good to go. Najee was hurt last week, but he should be good. Um, And he said this, he said, make sure you mention that Mitch Mitch Trubisky is shitty. So I just want y'all to know that, you Browns fans, so don't think this is just me. Um, And he said also that the offensive coordinator is brain dead, Matt Canada. He said, the only good part of our team so far is the defense, the head coach, and the receivers. So, Browns fans, I want you to listen to that. I want you to listen to that. The Browns offense is not the problem. It's the defense. You're playing against a a bum Mitch Trubisky, right? A bum Mitch Trubisky, an offensive line that's shaky. Najee Harris was injured last week, but the receivers are great. All right? So you got to ask yourself the question, are we going to let Chase Claypool, George Pickens, I'm trying to even think of who else they have. I totally forgot. But are they, are you going to let those receivers just torch you all day long? Are you going to find your balls and you going to go fight? Like, that's literally what it comes down to for me. I think this game's going to be close. I do. I think that the Steelers' defense is going to limit the Browns' offense. Um, it's going to be tough without TJ. Obviously for the Steelers, um, which it's, you know, that speaks for itself. You know, the Browns are going to be without Jadavian Clowney, but I loved what I've seen from Alex Wright. So I'm not too worried about that. Isaiah Thomas. Um, Really, the game should be close. You should have a, you should, you should have a Browns defense that dominates the Steelers. Like that. That should happen, but that also should have happened Sunday. Now, I'm not just saying that like in a cocky way. I mean, let's be honest here. What what did did my friend say? The only good part of the team is the coaching, the receivers, and the defense. Do you not have DBs? You got a bunch of great DBs. Martin Emerson's playing better than I could have even dreamed of. You have guys to match up. Right, the receiver shouldn't be a problem. They shouldn't be on paper. Are you gonna let them be a problem? Are you gonna lay down? Are you gonna blame 
you know, the man next to you in your room instead of you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it comes down to. Um, offensively for the Browns, I want to see what I saw Sunday. I want to see Amari Cooper getting the football, being involved. It's about time. I want to see that effective run game. I want to see the tight ends continue to get involved. We finally saw that. DPJ needs to step up. He was great in game one, invisible game two. David Bell, I'd like to see him getting involved. Getting involved. Um, but to me, it comes down to the, to the big thing. And by the way, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, and it doesn't matter who the players are. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about mentality. The Steelers could have a bunch of average players and they're still going to put up a fight because they're trained that way. The Steelers defense is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, doesn't matter how talented or not talented you are, you're going to go work because you have to. That is the mentality that we lack. And it's embarrassing. It's flat out embarrassing to sit here and talk about this. Because this should not be the case. So, I don't know how the game's going to go. To be honest with you, I really don't care. Um, And it's not that I don't care. It's just more so, I don't know what to expect. I want this team to be what I think they can be but it comes down to finding out what is actually in that locker room you know are you gonna overcome the situation that you're put in are you because you can you can like don't I don't want to hear oh you're you're wanting players to take things into their own hands yeah yeah I, I, I do I do you know, and I don't care, get yelled at, whatever. Like, if it's successful and it's working, then guess what? You're not going to get yelled at. You got to take chances. You know what I'm saying? Um, But we have a major problem. And I'm going to repeat it one more time. This game can either be like the game in 2020, week two, against the Bengals, where it, it felt like a must win, and you come out and you fix your problems, and the season goes on from there. Or you can be just like last week, and you can be laughed at. You can be embarrassed by your division rival prime time in your stadium. These are the options that you have. Now, what are we going to see? That's my question. What, what are we going to see? It's time to find out who you are. Everybody in their life has a moment. Or should have a moment. Where you look yourself in the mirror. And you say, despite what everybody thinks of me. Despite what people say of me. Expect from me. Who am I? Because only you can know. Who the fuck you are. And it is time. For this Cleveland Browns team. And this defense especially. To look themselves in the mirror. And ask that question and the good thing is we're going to find out Thursday we're going to find out because we have to the Steelers defense knows who they are it's why they're good every year right tell me I'm wrong I'm tired of it I am very tired of it because I'm going to tell you something and I know this doesn't I don't want to keep harping on the Jets game, but I saw one of the most disturbing things that I've ever seen in my life Sunday because of this football team. And I'm I'm not talking about the game. I'm talking about the effects of the game. Leaving that stadium, there was a man blacked out, drunk, crying, and his body was literally shaking. On the cement outside of Cleveland Brown Stadium. First NG Stadium. That image has not left my head. Like. And to some people. It's a. 
hey, you know, get over it, whatever, it's just a game thing. But it's so much more than that. I guarantee you that guy's got a pretty tough life. I guarantee you not everything's going well for him. But the one thing that he can look forward to is his team on Sunday. And this is what happens. And that has stuck with me ever since I saw it. You know, and it's it's very disturbing. You know, and to you, it might not sound bad at all. You know, you might be listening to this laughing and kind of thinking, oh, that's stupid, whatever, why do you care? No, like, I saw it. And it's up to this team to change it. You're the only ones who can change it. And you got an opportunity Thursday. You don't got to wait around. You don't got to play the blame game. Like, it, it is literally as simple as looking each other in the eyes, looking yourself in the mirror, and saying, all right, who's accountable? Why did things go the way they did? And that's up to you to figure it out. So, I don't know. Um, score wise, I have no clue, but I will tell you, I think it will be a close game and I really hope to see a completely different football team.